The Lord be with you. We're so glad to have another opportunity to hear God's word as it comes to us on this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Today in our readings, we're going to hear the Lord make a distinction between the ways of the world and God's ways, the ways of human thinking and God's way of thinking. God's way of thinking is not about what we need to do in order to be saved, but instead it's about what God has done for us and who he is calling us to be in him. And so as the apostles uh, teach us, especially John, he says, we love because God first loved us. And showing God's love is what we do. Jesus uh, is teaching today in the uh, Sermon on the Mount, as we call it, that the world's way of seeing things is not right, that God sees things differently. So Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, that means the humble, the lowly ones, the unimportant ones, the pathetic ones. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Blessed are those who are insignificant and small and even despised in the world. And we'll hear St. Paul say, God has chosen the way of weakness and shame and foolishness to bring about his great things. It's opposite of the way the world thinks. But God says to us in, uh, through the prophet Micah today, have I required from you all kinds of sacrifices and to do all these things that you offer up your gifts to me and so on? No, instead I have called you to show mercy, to love others, to forgive as I have forgiven you. And that's what the Lord calls us to do. And in that, he calls us blessed. Blessed. And we'll learn uh, today how to, call, uh, how to think of ourselves as blessed. When God calls us blessed, we are blessed. Let's now begin with our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly, and does what is right, and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue, and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. With the prophet Micah, we ask, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? We bear the burden of our transgressions, but there is nothing we can offer God that would pay the price for our sins. So we confess our sins to God in repentant faith, trusting only in his mercy for the sake of Jesus. Almighty God, we confess before you that we are sinners, sinful by nature, sinful from birth. We fail to treat people justly. We fail to show mercy. We do not walk humbly in your sight. We do not live the blessed life you offer us as we reject your ways. Forgive us, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. God the Father loves us. His Son, Jesus, died for us. The Holy Spirit guides us and empowers us to a God-pleasing life. In our Lord's place and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, exercise your forgiveness in goodness and mercy toward others. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the word of the Lord, and on his word he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany is written in the book of the prophet Micah, the sixth chapter. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the he hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses and Aaron and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember what Balak king of Moab devised and what Balaam son, the son of Beor answered him and what happened from Shittim to Gil Gilgal that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the gradual for the season of Epiphany. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthian Christians, the first chapter. For the word of the cross is folly, to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ crucified the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption so that as it is written let the one who boasts boast in the Lord this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God
We join all together in the verse of the day. Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the, the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Blessed are they, the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, full of sorrow, they shall be consoled. shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst. They shall have their fill. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you. Blessed are you, 
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We listen to Jesus' teaching in this Sermon on the Mount, and we begin to realize that it really goes against everything that we're taught in this world. And it goes against everything that feels natural to believe. Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. But we don't want to be poor. Rich is much more fun, pleasant, desirable. Isn't that what we work so hard for all our lives? At least to have something? Then Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn. But we don't want to mourn. Lord, we want to be happy. He says, blessed are the meek. But we're taught in, that in this life, it's those who are assertive, those who are go-getters, who get what they want. We like to hear success stories, and we like to be one of those success stories. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. But nobody around us seems to believe that there are such things as right and wrong. And frankly, we'd rather fit in with the crowd than let our religiousness make us stick out like a sore thumb. We'd rather just be normal than right. Jesus says, blessed are those who are persecuted but we'd rather be respected and we want our children to succeed. These are the things that it takes to do well in this world. At least that's what we're taught about everyone and everything around us. We don't want to go through suffering of any kind. It's not only no fun, but then our Christianity might actually cost us something. We might actually have to give up something. And so we just want to resist Jesus' teachings here. They go against the reality that we've come to know. But Jesus is teaching us a new reality. He teaches us that all the things of the world that we go after, the recognition in other people's eyes, the security that this world offers, those things are not actually real. There is a reality that we cannot see that's more real than anything that we do see. That's what Jesus is teaching us today. It's reality according to God. To God. He's got treasure and reward in heaven for those who want real treasure. The recognition and security that we seek are found in heaven, not here on earth. Fame in this world, or even just being popular with your friends and neighbors, it's just for a moment. And all it amounts to is everyone else wanting to have what you have, but Jesus promises us that he can give us things that others will want to have. Things that are actually real. Things that matter. Things that last even into eternity. The riches and the treasures of this world all fade away or are taken away by thieves, by moths that destroy, by rust that destroys. And security this world can't offer it. How much have we learned that already in this century alone? But God can offer security. But here's the hard part. The riches, the rewards that God offers are invisible to us. They are incognito for now. But we and all the world will see them later. But for now... We must suffer through this world where there are no true treasures or rewards. 
Instead, as followers of Jesus, we might receive and perceive with our earthly senses, but we receive and perceive our insults, laughter. We go through suffering and pain. That's what we get as followers of Jesus. Why must we go through all this? Because, Jesus says, that's the way the world treated Jesus and all the prophets of God who were before him. All of God's servants that God has sent to his people, they were mistreated because their message is not what people want to hear. It's because the world cannot listen to or believe in Jesus' way. It's because Jesus' way is so different than the ways of the world. His gifts that he gives are invisible, for one thing, and they're not instant gratification. Instead, if God is giving you joy and peace, you might experience hardships and difficulties to learn that joy and peace really only become visible and really perceivable by us as we go through pain and suffering. That's when you see the peace, the joy. The world and even our own sinful selves, we don't want to experience the hard times. The world seeks only after worldly wealth and wisdom and power. Jesus' wealth and wisdom and power seem instead, in this world, they look like poverty and foolishness and weakness. But as we follow Jesus, as we follow him in the way of the cross, as we take up with Jesus what looks to the world like poverty, foolishness, weakness. What we really have is wealth and wisdom and power. You see, it's a new reality for us. Again, it goes beyond what we see and experience, but it's reality according to God, which is what really counts. We come to learn that being a Christian is not about living for yourself. It's not about worrying about yourself in your own life. Jesus calls you to live for others, to worry about your neighbor. It's not for our own sake that we bear suffering, but it's for the sake of Christ our Lord, who suffered and laid down his life for you and me. And he calls us to follow him. And together with Jesus, we will walk right through suffering, right through insults and mockery. We'll go right through even death itself until we get to the life beyond all suffering and death. It's hard. It's a hard road until we get there. But Jesus is with us. Martin Luther calls this kind of teaching of Jesus the theology of the cross. And Dr. Luther says it well for all of us when he says, Our Lord has sweet words of comfort for us against all kinds of persecution. For I hear my Lord Christ telling me that he is truly delighted even when I'm being persecuted and that I should be happy about it. He promises that he has such a wonderful reward, such a treasure and comfort that I shouldn't trade for anything else in the world. He says that when you suffer for his sake, you are blessed. Now, this isn't a Christian calling you blessed, Dr. Luther says. It's not even an angel calling you blessed, but it is the Lord of heaven and earth calling you blessed. Let the devil and all the world rage against you. Let them raise up as many voices against you as the grains of sand on the seashore or 
the stars in the sky. But even if only one voice, the voice of Jesus Christ, is calling you blessed, his voice is enough to fill heaven and earth and echo everywhere, silencing all the other voices. Jesus comforts us with his words, making us unafraid, making us ready to suffer for his sake, knowing that although we might even hate our lives on this earth, we will have everything our hearts desire in heaven. So far, the quote from Martin Luther. So Jesus invites us not to avoid suffering and not to run after the things that this world thinks are important, but to rely on his word and promises. You see, we already have all the things that the world says are important. We've already got them. Glory, wealth, strength, wisdom. We have all these things in our hearts now through Christ. And we have them stored up as treasures in heaven. Now we can't see or feel God's gifts. Except, like I said, they help us in times of trouble and hardship and need. It's when something terrible has happened that you'll be surprised to find that God's peace is in your heart. You know that God is still in control and that he's going to help you even through the difficult time. It's when you're weak that you'll be surprised to find that God's strength is in you. He gives it to you. Not strength to lift up barbells or cars or even to win every game that you play. Not that kind of strength but strength to make it through each difficult moment, one day at a time. And we never know when those difficult moments are going to strike in our lives. We have God's gifts that will bless us, especially in the times when we wouldn't expect to have those gifts at all. St. Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong in foolishness. I have the wisdom of God, and so on. And when you feel trampled upon by other people downtrodden in life, the Lord says, lift up your head and keep looking up to God because he is your strength. You can be confident and secure as sure as God is faithful, that God is true as sure as his word and promises are faithful and true. We don't have to chase after the things that the world looks for because we're never going to find true riches or strength or honor in this world anyway. Instead, we take up a teaching that is not our own, a wisdom that is totally against what seems logical to our worldly minds. We preach God's word, and we praise his deeds, and we look to our Savior who is crucified for us to provide us treasure in heaven, beginning right here and now with the treasures of the forgiveness of all of our sins and life, eternal life. These are treasures worth suffering a while for in this world. You see, you're already living forever. You're already living eternal life because you have the life of Christ in you. And that means you're never going to die. So no matter what else you might have to go through in this life, in this world, you're walking with Jesus. Everything is going to be okay. No matter how bad things look to, our, to these human eyes. So we can even go as far as to say... Let the world and all the bad guys do their worst. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. This is a new reality that goes against what we learn from life in this world. It's reality according to God. So what does Jesus say about all of us who come and 
discover and participate in this new reality that Jesus calls us to. God says to us, blessed are you. You are blessed. God is at work in you, doing the things that really matter, the things that are really important in this life. Even though everyone else around you may not even be able to see it, blessed are you because you now see things, not as the blind world sees them, but you see things as God sees them. Jesus' teachings might seem strange to us, but he's giving us new eyes to see the invisible things of God. Now I admit, the Lord's teachings are unusual, and as we've seen, unpopular. But we thank him that part of his saving work for us is giving us new eyes to see. And if God calls you blessed, you are blessed indeed. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join with all Christians everywhere in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. for God.